This time, we continue the Wi-Fi 7 upgrade journey on the farm with the brand new U7 Lite. This is probably the most anticipated uh, unified device right now. It's a Wi-Fi 7 access point for $99. It's the entry level of budget friendly. In fact, if you know of any other Wi-Fi 7 access point that is $99 or less, put them down below in the comments because I haven't found any yet. Um, I am going to replace that old Nano HD access point that's there, which is Wi-Fi 5. Ew, it's doing just fine, but we can have Wi-Fi 7, so why not? And uh, I'm going to replace it with this for a few reasons that I'll get to into uh, get into later. But the main thing to note about this, which is the one thing that I noted, is that yes, it's $99, but you do not get the six gigahertz band, right? So Wi-Fi six E and seven support six gigahertz band, which I've done in a lot of other videos about what that is. This does not have that. Now that's not necessarily a negative because it's cheaper and very few devices actually can use the six gigahertz band uh, up until now. So um, that's that's the concession that you're making. But I think the plan is take it out of the box. We're going to replace that Nano HD. We're going to look at this in the Unifier uh, controller, see what it looks like and what there is. And then of course do some speed tests as well. So that's the plan. So um, let's get into it. All right, let's see what's in the box. It's not a very big box. It might not come across, but this is much smaller, very compact compared to like the Pro and the Pro Max. But uh, let's get it out. So first, of course, as always, we got to do this. Yep, yeah, I know. And uh, let's see what we get in here. So this is the, oh, yeah, not sure what that is. Okay. Pull this out. And there is the U7 light. That's it, there's an access point. It's, uh, here's the palm of my hand. You can see it's not that big. It's uh, reasonable sized, but hopefully that will fit my existing mount. Let's see, otherwise we'll, uh, we'll put up a new mount. But there's the access point. Then we get the template for mounting it, which is here. There's a mount here and there is the plastic uh, mount. I think that's the one I'm already using there. So that should be all right, but there's the mount for it. I usually cut these off just because they're annoying. You can't get the access point off without. Anyway, that's a security thing. You might want to do that. <laughs> and then there's some literature and that's it. So what's in the bag? There must be screws and stuff that put in there now. Because it's a much smaller box, obviously. So um, what have we got? Two more. There's two bags in the bag. Yeah, there's some screws there for mounting. And then there is, oh, three bags. That's the special tool for getting that security tab open. And there are some more screws and whatnot for mounting it as well. So very good. That's it, as expected, not a lot. So let's take the uh, U7 light and uh, we'll stick it up on the ceiling. So this might be a good time to consider subscribing to the channel. Yeah, if you enjoy this kind of content, all the new Unify devices and home automation, click subscribe down below. Really help out the channel because I'm going for 50,000 subscribers this year. Yeah, or you can put a thumbs up or leave a comment. What are the, some of the questions around the U7 light that I might have missed out on? Uh, any support will be highly appreciated. All right, back to the video. I'm now in Unify network. So let's have a look at the U7 light which is right there. So it is, first of all, running on two and a half gigabit. So it is connected to my Office Pro Max 16. If you have not seen my Pro Max 16 video, go check that out. That is a fantastic sort of powerful, smaller switch that also does rack mounting. It's brilliant. Um, anyway, it's connected to that on two and a half gigabit. First of all, it has now been running for a little bit. I connected last night and it is now the morning. Now, first of all, you can see here that the TX retries were quite high last night when I installed it. That was because the five gigahertz band was overlapping other access points that are near it. So until that was fixed and it moved to channel 40, as you can see, there was a lot of interference. Um, 
the good thing about that is that the unified devices will find this out automatically most of the time and then just move so it moves to channel 40 and you can see it's been perfect ever since um, so currently we have two devices connected you can see that here there's a two and we have of course the two wi-fi 7 bands which is 2.4 gigahertz and five now remember we do not get six gigahertz with the u7 light uh, we get the model we get a bunch of ip addresses etc the usual stuff here uh, it's been up for two hours, so I restarted it um, just to you know, clear out anything that was, might have been interfering with it. And then we have the stats here for the two uh, antennas. So actually, I don't know exactly what the difference is between the transmit power and the EIRP. So if you know, put in the comments. I am learning all the time, and I appreciate when you help me out. Um, we don't have any um, retries really or drop after we fixed that, so that's really nice. It's, it's performing really, really well. And then we have the parent device here, which is my Office Pro Max 16 running on two and a half gigabit. Now the power for this is only 5.8 watts. It is not using a lot of power, which is what we expected. If you go and check out my uh, U7 Pro Max video, that's up at about 14 watts or something, quite high, uh, but that's also doing a lot of processing. So um, there's a difference obviously in that. So not very power hungry. I just went up to six and a half, but not a lot. Uh, insights. We can again see here there is uh, quite a lot of interference on 2.4. This is, you'll find this, the more devices you have on 2.4, the more it comes up as utilized. Now I learned this from the comments that this doesn't mean that there's a lot of devices on it. It just means that the nearby interference or, or noise from things using 2.4 like Bluetooth or Zigbee or whatever it might be is actually interfering with this. So you can see here that uh, it's going up and down as well. Whereas on the five gigahertz, there's nowhere near as many uh, things using that band. So five gigahertz, six gigahertz, always preferred if you can get the coverage in my opinion. And then we can see here, there's the history of it actually moving to that uh, band, like I said. So that's pretty good. System statistics, system statistics, I can't talk. Um, that's just the CPU and memory. So let's go to the settings. I want to give this probably a another name, not U7 Lite. I'm going to call this U7 uh, Guest Cottage because that's where we installed it. And then we have the radios, the channel for 2.4. And again, this is I've learned this through trial and error as well as the comments on this channel. So again, we all learn from this. The channel width on 2.4, I always leave at 20. There's just too many devices that can't use 40 and the band is so narrow already, 2.4 gigahertz band is very narrow, that if you put it at 40, you just don't get the the different bands. As, I mean, you don't get as many bands, so you get more overlaps. So I always leave it at 2.4. Uh, the transmit power, I leave that at auto as well. I'll let Unify figure that one out. Now with 5 gigahertz, this doesn't have 160 um, megahertz band or giga, megahertz band. Some of them do for 5 gigahertz. So I'm gonna leave this at 80 because that's the optimal channel for where I am. If you're in an area where there is a lot more noise, a lot more other devices near you that use five gigahertz, you might wanna change it to 40 to try and minimize that overlap. Um, and then we have a uh, other settings here, you know, IP settings, etc. And of course we can manage the LED. Um, now I am not gonna change any of that except the name. Uh, it's a very simple access point. There's not a lot to it. Uh, that's the whole idea. It's sub $100 for Wi-Fi 7. So I think the next step is to actually go in and we'll go next door where the cottage is and we'll do some speed tests and see what we get on the um, new Wi-Fi 7 but on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So before we get into the speed test, let me just go over a couple of the features and the numbers for the U7 light. Uh, it covers about 115 square meters of area, so 10 by 10 meters, which is plenty for this, uh, this building or this area here. Um, it is uh, roughly able to connect about 200 devices, so that's pretty good. Like, that's not what I have here. That's nowhere near 200, right? Um, and of course, the speed of it, is I'm just going to refer to my notes here. It has a, a 4x4 antenna, 2x2 uh, multi-user MIMO on the uh, 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz. So that's that's pretty good. Again, we don't get 6 gigahertz, just bear that in mind. And the max data rate on the 5 gigahertz, if you are running Wi-Fi 7, is 4.3 gigabit. Right, so that's combining all of those antennas together, which you can do on Wi-Fi 7. Unfortunately, I do not have a Wi-Fi 7 device yet, so I can't show you that, but 
that's the theoretical max on, and of course, lots of real world uh, factors might influence that. Um, I have Wi-Fi 6 on this, so we're running up to about 2.4 gigabits um, of connection speed. I don't think we'll get that high, just saying. I think five gigahertz on 80 megahertz band will get about six, 700 uh, megabit, which is really good still for Wi-Fi. I'm not complaining. Um, yeah, and of course it supports all the old old school um, standards like Wi-Fi 5, 4, etc. So that's fine. So I'm here in Wi-Fi Man and I'm on connected to the U7 Lite, as you can see a U7 Guest Cottage. And I'm going to make uh, create a speed test that goes to the UDMSE, so local network speed test. Because I'm on Starlink, I'm not going to get gigabit anyway. Um, but I can go over here, I can scroll to the UDMSE and I can start a speed test from here. So I'm going to start a speed test and we'll get a local network speed test. So what are we getting here? 500, 600, 700. It's what about what I expected. 700 megabit uh, down and roughly the same up. So that's the limitation of the 5 gigahertz, 80 megahertz band that I'm on. Um, of course, if I had a Wi-Fi 7 device, I could use two antennas at the same time and combine it all. I do not. So uh, that's what I'm stuck with for the moment, that's still really good. Um, I really wanna get a Wi-Fi 7 device though. So on the Wi-Fi, on $99 access point, I get almost 700 um, megabit connection on the Wi-Fi. That, that is pretty impressive. Uh, let's just do another one just for the hell of it. Let's see where we get the same thing again, roughly. It's been about that every time I've tested it, to be honest, so 600 depending on how much interference there is, where I move. There's a lot of real world factors that go into this. So let's hear six, yeah, about 600 megabit or so. Um, so not bad, not bad at all. So that's, um, that's performing as I expected. Um, and if you haven't heard of Wi-Fi Man before, go check it out. It's actually pretty good. It, it's a very neat tool. And if you're on the Unify uh, platform, it out offers you a whole bunch of extra features that it recognizes with the devices like, uh, device to device speed test, like from one to the other, two devices running Wi-Fi man, you can test the speed between them. That's kind of neat, very good. So that's the U7 Lite, what do you think? Sub $100 Wi-Fi 7 access point that goes with the whole Unify platform, it's kind of neat. Like, I like it, I like it. Is it a problem it doesn't have six gigahertz? Eh, not so much, because a lot of devices can't use it anyway. Um, and if you have a new Wi-Fi 7 device, you can combine the five gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz band anyway, and you get higher speed that way. Um, would I have liked it to have six gigahertz? Of course. But again, that's what the U7 Pro is for, or the U7 Pro Max, or the U7 uh, Inwall Pro. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them that do support the 6 gigahertz band. So um, let me know again. What do you think? Put it down in the comments down below. Um, I think it's a neat device. It's the one I have heard the most, um, the most about that people want. Like this is what everybody's asking for. Where is the entry level U7 um, device from Unify that I can just use in my in my normal house or whatever? Um, there it is, the U7 Lite. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. This time we're gonna upgrade more Wi-Fi 7. No, we're gonna upgrade more. We're gonna... This time we're gonna continue the farm upgrade journey of Wi-Fi 7. No, that's what I wanna say.